and welcome to another edition of 574 Sports here on 91.1 The Globe. My name is Spencer Buttermore, and I'll be your host for this episode. T starting things off, Maple Leaf Athlete of the Week, Tanner Camp sits down with Jill Steinmetz. Also coming up later on the show, Josh Gleason sits down with Katie Sport to talk a year in athletics as from the athletic director's standpoint. Also, the 574 Athlete of the Month is Brad Stolzfus, and he's going to be sitting down with Ben Cotton. And to wrap up the show, we send things over to the bullpen with Anthony Todaro for an update on baseball. That's coming up here right here on 574 Sports on 91.1 The Globe. Welcome to 574 Sports. My name is Tanner Camp, and to my left here we have Jill Steinmetz, senior track runner for the uh, Goshen College track team. She's this week's Maple Leaf Athlete of the Week. That week, Jill had two second place finishes, including in the 800 meter run. She posted a time of two minutes and 34 seconds, along with the 1500 meter run. She had her collegiate best five minutes and 8.38 seconds. Wow, Jill. First off, congratulations on being Maple Leaf Athlete of the Week. Thank you. So how does it feel for you being this week's Maple Leaf Athlete of the Week? Um, it's great to have this sort of recognition for the work that I do in athletics. It's fun. And it is, you know, most importantly, having fun while doing uh, something you really love but also competing at a very good level. So uh, going into your senior year, uh, what was your mindset for this upcoming track season? Well, I was pretty excited for the season, it being my last collegiate season. Um, and I've been running track for a number of years now, so um, I've had my ups and downs in times and um, just like how much I enjoy it. And so I had two goals for the season. One was to, en to enjoy myself and to stay healthy. And the other one was to compete. And um, I've so far been doing both of those. And it's great that, you know, having fun is an important aspect for you because that's something that a lot of athletes sometimes forget. So it's glad that it looks like you're having fun while doing something that you also really love. So we, we talked a little bit before, you're the only senior on the women's side, at least, and one of three seniors in general. So that can be tough sometimes, you know. So what motivates you, whether it be the team or just yourself, what motivates you uh, to compete at such a high level like you did this week at the Huntington Invitational? Um, well, I've had my fair share of being an underclassman as well, and I always looked up to the upperclassmen who were putting in a lot of work and a lot of time into their, um, their athletics, and I want to be that good example for them as well and show them how working really hard has its um, payoff towards the end. And the harder you work, the more success you have, the more fun you have. It's kind of, it all goes together. So I really enjoy it and um, enjoy my teammates and having a good time while also being extremely competitive. So. And from hearing from other teammates, getting to talk to them, they said that you are a great leader just for that aspect of uh, being competitive, but also having fun and enjoying each other's company at meets during practices. It really is great to see uh, you as that type of leader. So. You talked also a little bit about that you had a bunch of goals and one of them just being having fun and staying competitive and giving it your best. So uh, again, as a senior wanting to kind of go out both individually but also for a team, what would you say that the team's goal, maybe specifically for the women's side, what was the uh, women's track and field team, what was their goal for this season? Um, yeah, so we've readdressed goals as we've gone along and our current goal for the end of the season is to finish ahead of the men's team at conference, um, which we haven't done in about 10 years at least. Um, I think that our women's side is very strong and we will do a lot of great things at conference, which is here in two weeks now. So um, we're looking to compete, we're looking to score points. And you know a lot of competitive uh, athletes for all, both women's and men's side, and that kind of that uh, competitiveness to go against, not even go against the men, but just try to do better than them mm -hmm. uh, is great motivation. So again, we really look forward to that, as you said, conference within the next two weeks. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I normally ask this question, it's for uh, people who are going to be seniors or are still going, but you know, just in just a few weeks, that'll be it for you. So what has been your favorite moment as a track runner uh, over your last few years uh, representing Goshen College? 
Um, we've had a number of fun relays, and some of our relay squads have been kind of thrown together where someone who doesn't usually run that event jumps in and gives it their best. And so we had a good one last year at conference where we got to score some points with that relay, even though some of the runners had never really ran that distance. So that was, that was a high point. And this season, cutting off time for my 1500 has felt really good as well. And glad that you could do that in this last meet, and of course, well-deserving for the Maple Leaf Athlete of the Week, which again, big congratulations on. So as we start getting closer, you know, conference is just ahead, just a few more meets left, and then that's it. What are you looking forward to within these next few weeks as you get closer and closer to graduating from GC? Um, I think, like, spending time with my teammates at practice. Like, I look forward to practice every day. I think that's really fun. I'm excited for the meets, too, and that's where we can, like, show off what we – all the hard work that we do throughout the week, but um, our workouts are really great and I am really enjoying the team aspect. So just enjoying the last couple of weeks of competitive training. And very exciting, you know, to as someone who's seen you guys practice every once in a while, we always tell you you're having fun and motivating each other to get better. Again, we even with just a few weeks left to give it your absolute all so you can go out with your senior year with, uh, a big bang basically. Mm -hmm. So Jill, with that, do you have any final thoughts, comments, inspirational quotes that you want to give? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> uh. um, just keep working hard, do your best. That's kind of what we say before practice every day too. Just work hard today, work hard tomorrow, do your best, have fun. Heard it from Jill Steinmetz. He worked that for everything, sports, academics, everything. Jill, thank you so much for your time, really appreciate it. Thanks, Tanner. With Jill Steinmetz, I'm Tanner Camp, here on 574 Sports. Overall, uh, from an athletic sense, we're probably not where we want to be yet. The other parts are, are just as important. Um, we continue to have really strong academic uh, student athletes. Um, our, our coaches and athletes work really hard at uh, um, work in the community, work uh, the community both um, off campus and on campus. We're always going to be looking to improve on, on all those areas. Coach Young, uh, we received official word that, that he was leaving the same day that the team was showing back on campus. Fortunately, uh, Coach Drope had been in the program for three years um, and um, had uh, built the report with the players and, and um, was, was in a position that we felt comfortable putting him in an interim role for uh, up, to, uh, up to the whole, the whole season. And at the end of the day, um, I mean, passion for the sport, passion for his guys, passion for, for doing it here. Um, and we felt that he fit what the program needed long term very well. Transitioning to, to women's soccer, we were um, very pleased with the pool of candidates. Uh, we had between 50 and 60 applications, um, very qualified applications. Again, we had the time to, to open it up, um, and, and certainly Drew Newsbaum has, has stepped in and has been an important part of um, helping the transition. And I mean, that was, that was really important for us to have, have him in place and, and his experiences as well. Um, and we're, we're excited about uh, where that's headed. We have a really good facility in terms of uh, its uh, multi-purpose use. There's certainly changes that need to happen. Uh, one of those was us putting over $150,000 into the weight room this last, this last summer and, and making that better for our students in general, certainly for our athletes. In terms of facilities, uh, over the last two years, maybe a little bit more, we've put almost a quarter million dollars into baseball and softball fields. Uh, we are doing the backstop, baseball dugouts, scoreboards, um, walkway out there, all, all of that. Um, still finalizing a few pieces of that. Um, and then, I mean, they are drastically different facilities now than they are two, three years ago. So that's, that's pretty major. There's a lot of things going really well. Um, 
every year has its ups and downs and, and challenges and, and different things, but um, I mean, at least my, my hope and my, my belief is that we're doing a lot of good things in the classroom. Uh, there's certainly a lot of reason to believe that. Uh, a lot of good things, um, team building and uh, through all those challenges, uh, a lot of good things happening with building people. Uh, that's what we're about. Welcome to 574 Sports. I'm Ben Cotton, and to my left, we have senior baseball player Brad Stokes Boots. And this season, he's had 29 hits and 28 runs. And also, a few days ago, he had 100 walks. Now, people who don't know baseball, they'll think, is that like a good stat to have? But it really comes down to the middle approach. Can you tell us, like, how do you know when to swing and when not to swing? Yeah, certainly. So, my job as a leadoff hitter is just to get on first base, at least. Anything more than that is great. But my approach at the plate is just to uh, swing at a good pitch, and if I don't get my pitch or if I don't get one that uh, I can really do some damage with, I'll most likely just let it go. And, uh, you know, when guys don't throw me strikes, uh, it leads to walks, and my patience does pay off. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, because 100, it's crazy. You're the first person, first person at Goshen College to ever hit 100, and it's amazing to be able to, to witness it and watch it. It's, truly is crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I've, I've been able to have a lot of at-bats during my time as a four-year starter for the Maple Leafs and just being able to, uh, again, just kind of have the same approach. Don't swing at anything I don't like. And I mean, I have a lot more two-strike counts and I strike out more because of it, but I'm also getting on base in different ways. Yeah, it's crazy to watch. And uh, first question for you is, uh, how's it feel to be a uh, Maple Leaf athlete of the month? Uh, I that's very uh, that's great. Um, it's a great honor, I guess. Um, you know, it's uh, I guess it's nice to, to get some acclaim for the um, things that I've been doing over the last four years um, on the field, but also off the field. Um, it, it's a good honor. It's a great honor. Yeah, of course. And another question is, what is your mindset this season? You had like many challenges, mainly due to weather. It's hard. It's hard for you to play baseball when it's it snows on one day, it's shiny on the other day, and right. then. There's a flood, maybe, you never know. <laughs> right. No, uh, our, our mindset is just to take one game at a time, even though that seems so cliche. I mean, we know we have a long season, and even though uh, we have some rain outs that we have to uh, have a, a game get pushed back on a day we were supposed to have a test or something like that, you know, that can cause uh, some troubles, as you know, as a student athlete yourself. Um, uh, but mindset going into the season is that we're going to make it to the championship game in the Crossroads League. We're going to win it, and we're going to keep playing after that. Yeah, and we all believe that you have the mindset for it. We know you're going to put the hard work in, show your heart out there, and you have the whole the whole school just going for you, reading for you. No, well, I appreciate that. And, you know, our team, we're, we're backing each other up. We're making sure that everyone's on the same page and that our, our, our chemistry is, is one of the best things about our team. Of course. Now, you've been here for four years. Before you came here, what were you thinking? Like, what was your – what was your dream goal as a freshman when you were walking through that door? Uh, to play right away, and I did. Um, I wasn't really recruited heavily here. I kind of just knew my senior year of high school that I was going to be going to Goshen College just because um, my family had been here. My parents and my brother are the most uh, recent graduates in terms of uh, related uh, of close family. So, I mean, in terms of baseball, I kind of just showed up, said, hey, I'm going to play, and uh, here I am, so, um, you know, Coach Childers has supported all of his players, and, uh, especially me, throughout uh, my four years, and it's been great. So after those four years again, let's just, uh, just tell me about your favorite moment here at GC. Uh, favorite baseball moment was uh, last year when we made it to the Crossroads League uh, tournament was just uh, to be successful in the tournament as well. I mean, my freshman year, we didn't make the playoffs. We only had eight wins. Um, and then the following year, we had like 19 wins uh, my sophomore year, and we, we kind of got a, a sense of what the Crossroads League tournament was like. Then my junior year, we had one of the best teams uh, in the Crossroads League at that year. Um, as it turned out to be, we won our first two Crossroads League games. I would say those two games in particular were probably my most memorable moments at GC. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, also, can you tell us about the bond that you have with your teammates? Like, I personally witnessed it. I've seen you guys run full court basketball on two courts, like the whole team comes out just having a great time together. Yeah, yeah, we have like a, a group messages and, and stuff that we can text each other. We have a, a, a baseball like lifting and hitting group uh, uh, that we text. And then there's also the the basketball group of, <laughs> of guys, which is pretty much everyone. But uh, uh, yeah, it's always fun to, to bond with them off the court, also on the field and in the dugout too, uh, especially during practices as well. Um, I'm close with a lot of those guys, and, and it's a, it's such a pleasure to be playing with them. Uh, and again, when everyone has the same goal, that's when we can be successful. Of course. Yeah. And as we wrap up, do you have anything you want to say for just maybe a young guy that's he's a freshman in college? He's saying you as a senior. Like, how? What would you tell your freshman self? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, well, I'm much more uh, calm my senior year than I was my freshman year. I had uh, not anger issues, but in terms of when I got frustrated on the baseball field, I would pre like take that out somehow uh, in the dugout, whether that be like yelling or, or throwing my glove down or something. And there's much less of that now. There's, uh, it's just much more of a, a easy going kind of, kind of way just to show people that that's not necessarily <laughs> what I'm about anymore. And hopefully the freshman Take, to, take that as well. Yeah. Well, I just want to say thank you. We really appreciate you for these past four years, all the hard work you gave to the school. Really appreciate everything that you've done on the field, for the station, for the radio, everywhere you go. We just really appreciate your hard work. Thanks, man. Yep. I really no appreciate problem. that. Thank no you. problem. Thank you for watching 574 Sports. I'm Ben Cotton with Brass Toast Foods, and have a nice day. Hello and welcome to the bullpen. I'm your host, Anthony Boltzero. I'm here with Quinlan Armstrong, right fielder for the Goshen Maple Leafs. Uh, Q, you switched from right field to center field this year, and uh, on our spring break trip to Georgia, you suffered a season-ending injury. Uh, could you walk us through what happened that day? Yeah, so, I mean, uh, ball was hitting the left center gap, and uh, Ryan, the left fielder, and I both went after it. It was just one of those kind of fluke plays where neither one of us were sure if we were going to get to the ball and uh, we ended up diving headfirst into each other and somehow uh, ended up breaking both my tibula and fibula. Um, and unbeknownst to me at the time, uh, had suffered a thing called compartmental syndrome, which cut off um, all the blood supply to my lower part of my leg, um, which found out later um, that evening, like as they rushed me to the hospital, um, that I was in jeopardy of losing my leg. Um, so they took me in emergency surgery um, to relieve the pressure and get everything situated so um, they could breathe again and, and the blood flow could, could, could come back. Um, and then after that first surgery, I sat in the hospital for four days. Um, my leg's still broken while they pumped out blood and everything out of my leg to try and um, get the swelling to go down and had another surgery and thankfully was able to only have that, that one, uh, one more before they got everything. Um, healed up and I was in the hospital for a few more days before coming home and um, right now just trying to, to heal up and get back. Um, as far as the recovery process goes, when do you think you'll be able to get back out in the field with us? Um, honestly, I mean, I really don't know a ton of information as far as that goes. It's really dependent on how fast uh, the bone heals. Um, it's a really slow process based on everything I've been told. Um, the doc says it could take three to nine months on the for the bone to heal properly. So um, basically, once that happens and able to get strength back up and and rebuild my muscle that I've all lost and everything. Um, so I'm I'm really hoping to next fall um, make a quick recovery and, and get back out on the field and play a full season next year. So all right, I heard that uh, recently you've been baptized into the Catholic Church. Uh, Tell me, is that something you've been wanting to do for a while? Or? Yeah, I mean, um, I started going to church, the Catholic church up here in uh, St. John's, uh, the start of my freshman year, and um, that was really something that I had been looking for in my life was was faith, and um, that just connected with me. The Catholic church connected with me, and um, 
went through um, our CIA program at the church um, for, since the start of this year, uh, learning more about the Catholic faith and the traditions and, um, and what exactly the beliefs are, and um, continued to, to grow stronger in my faith. And um, then at the Easter vigil um, that was held over here at the church, um, was baptized and then confirmed. Um, so that was a really um, cool moment for me and really awesome experience um, for friends and family here. So I'm just really looking forward to growing in my faith, continuing, and to, to get more knowledge um, in the teachings of the church and things of that nature. And then uh, besides your injury rehab this summer, uh, do you have any plans to do anything? Uh, yeah, as of right now, I am supposed to be interning at Coca-Cola uh, Distributor uh, in Kokomo, where I'm from, um, doing some marketing and uh, sales work for them. So I'm really looking forward to um, doing that and hopefully leg allowing me to, to do that and do everything to the best of my potential. All right. Sounds like you're going to have a great summer. I sure uh, hope so. Thanks for joining me. Yeah, thank you. All right. This has been The Bullpen. Uh, thanks for watching. Thank you for tuning in to the final episode of the season of 574 Sports. Be sure to tune in next year as many new changes are coming to the globe. And as always, be ready for more 574 Sports on 91.1 The Globe, your home for Maple Leaf Athletics.